But of course, you get into racing incidents and this, that, the other thing, and you know, hitting a wall like this. This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Gran Turismo 7 once again. For today, I thought I would take a step back and kind of show you guys some of my favorite builds for Sardegna here. Sardegna? To Sardegna? I don't know. But anyway, uh, long story short, we've got a couple of cars here. Uh, ideally, you know, starting with the Mazda 787B, as many people do. And I've actually got a couple of builds I wanted to show you. I've also got the Nissan R92CP. And then we've also got the, uh, actually weirdly enough, the Mercedes-Benz uh, CLKLM. So just kind of showing you some of the cars that I bounce between and some of the times, average times, ideal times, uh, when you pit, you know, all that kind of fun stuff here today. So for this first build is courtesy of Dino underscore pit, who had provided this as part of the 1.31 update. So this is technically three updates old now, but according to their testing, they were able to get a 24.25 total time. So 24 minutes and 25 seconds on Serdekna, which in my mind is crazy with a 787B. So by their testing, their uh, typical lap times were actually in the 132s or 133s. So I'll definitely post a link in the description to Dino's build here. The main parts here is that uh, Dino is absolutely using a full ECU power and does not have any power restrictors on and has medium tires. So the, the main way that you're weighing the car down with all these added upgrades is you're not having a turbo and you are actually adjusting the downforce. So the downforce is, uh, by the looks of it here, pretty high. So they're not reducing the downforce because the lower downforce, the higher speeds and the more power points, I believe is how it works. So again, here's a little uh, brief kind of preview of what that build looks like there. The other main uh, discussion point to here is that they've actually moved the top speed down using the fully customized racing transmission to about 340 kilometers an hour, which again, definitely does have an effect on the overall power points. So the main takeaways from this build is that it is on medium tires and because you do not limit the uh, ECU or the power restrictor, you are going to need fuel. So this is one of those builds that you do want to pit. And I'll actually include like pit times and all that kind of fun stuff there. So you can kind of gauge how much time a lap that you're losing by not pitting if you have a more conservative build versus how much time you'll be losing for when you do pit, but how much time you're gaining over uh, each lap pace by basically being able to go full throttle there. So it looks like according to the creator here that after lap eight, so into lap nine, you'll want to pit for a new set of mediums. And for the first stint, you'll want to be using fuel mode two. And the remaining part of the stint, so under stint two, up to the finish line, you can actually move down to fuel, fuel mode one. All right, so when we take a look at this time chart with that build, I didn't do great. My average lap was about six seconds slower than the ideal average lap time. However, this is the first time that I did this build and it was the first time that I like tried it out and did all the rest of it. Of course, I was trying to commentate at the same time. So honestly, I do feel like there is a high possibility that like this is a realistic time to get the 2425.743 with an uh, about average lap time of a 132.5. Of course, because there is AI, you're going to run into traffic. You're going to have, you know, racing instance, that kind of stuff. 
So there is going to be some variation. Of course, you know, the, the more that you try it out, the more that you test it, the better feel that you get for it all. So you might actually be able to get a better time than all of that. But uh, I think that this here, the 2425, is a really easy uh, time to hit. All right, so we are back with the 787B once again. And what's different this time is that the car is definitely slower. And the reason being is that this is actually my personal build. And with this build here, one of the things that I was trying to go for is that I wanted to be able to just like leave it on hard tires and just leave it on fuel map six and just kind of race. Don't want to worry about like pit stops or like trying to remember what lap I'm on. You know, when I've been doing a lot of the grinding, it's I've been doing it via remote play. So I've had like YouTube up on a TV or a TV show or something on TV. And then with my Steam Deck or my phone using remote play and just generally like having this going on, like I'm barely paying attention to this anymore. I've got this like so memorized. So yeah, long story short with all of this, this is the build that I've been using for quite some time. So I know generally, well, more than generally, I know exactly how it operates and whatnot. So you don't need to do any semblance of pitting at all. You just use the hard tires and you just kind of stick with it. I want to say with how this works too, because it is on the power restrictor, it's down to 96%. Uh, you actually will have a little bit of fuel left over. So what I found is, you know, towards the end, you can start flipping around the fuel modes when you've got some extra fuel just to really get those lap times down at that point. But from my personal experience here, you know, it's been because I'm not really paying attention to it and I get into racing incidents a lot more easily. I've been averaging you know, the 138s. So kind of honestly about the same lap time as the previous build. But of course you get into racing incidents and this, that, the other thing, and you know, hitting a wall like this. So the main differences between this build and the Dino underscore pit build is kind of like I was saying before, it is definitely slower because you're negating like the pit time for just you know, fuel efficiency. The other kind of main thing that I've noticed too is that when you have builds that are more power heavy, power hungry, fuel hungry, because they are so much faster, I've noticed that they have a tendency to have some more understeer. So with this car here, because you do have the power restrictor on to 96%, I found that in some of these tighter corners, you're actually able to still have full throttle or still really put the throttle down. And it seems that the turning radius is a lot tighter, which I personally like a lot because in my opinion, this car has a tendency to understeer quite a lot as it is. So for example here, I'm pretty sure with the previous build, I'd be up into fifth gear lifting off here and honestly like you do just a little uh, almost a tap of a break into that corner and you're fine but with the previous build you'd be in fifth gear you'd have to lift off you'd have to break hard down two gears and you would still be under steering so I don't know I personally like this feel a lot more if I'm honest. So we ended that race with a total time of 25 minutes and 50 seconds or rounding up to 51 seconds. So as you can tell towards the end I had a couple of incidents. Average lap time was about 143.4 which was about five seconds lap uh, slower than the previous build. However, this is where everything gets a little bit interesting. Of course, like I said, there was not any pit stops or any, you know, pit stop durations to worry about. It was just set the laps and just keep going. So when we're comparing the ideal times is where things get really, really interesting in my mind. So for the previous build, the Dino underscore pit build. So the ideal time would be the one that they set, which was the 24 minutes and 25 seconds with an average lap time about 1 minute and 32 seconds. 
So with that being said, that's including the pit. So that's, you know, pitting on like lap eight, lap nine, somewhere in there. But when we're comparing the ideal time to uh, my build that I've got there. So ideally, you're trying to hit about one minute, 38 seconds lap. You might be able to push it a little bit faster than that. But because you're not worrying about pits or anything like that, your total time is actually 24 minutes and 30 seconds if your average lap time is 138. So it is very, very close to the Dino underscore pit build. So I find this really interesting, this compare and contrast of, you know, if you're just grinding mindlessly and you just have something going on in the background and you're not really focusing on it and whatnot, like bias, I would recommend my build. I really would because you just set the field map six, you set it on hard tires and you just lap. But if you're trying to be as efficient with your time as possible, looking at the Dino underscore pit build would be my recommendation, especially if you have a wheel where you have a little bit better control than what my build would be when you're doing like remote play on the Steam Deck and whatnot. Every now and again, I get a little bit tired of listening to the Mazda 787B's engine. So I decide to, of all cars, to go with the Mercedes CLK LM. And of course I've modified it to make it look like the GTR because I'm weird like that. But it turns out as far as the spec sheet goes, it's literally just stock. But the only thing that I change on it is that I put racing hard tires on it. So that being said, because it is stock, the car itself has a little bit of trouble with uh, the fuel load. Uh, on fuel mode six, it does not have quite enough to get to the end. So you normally have to put it on about two or three to last until lap eight. You know, go in just for fuel and then come out, um, you know, ahead of everybody else, hopefully. But that being said, I honestly really enjoy this car just as it's a really nice change from everything. It's not like super race car-y. Uh, it actually has quite a bit of oversteer, so it makes for a little bit more of an interesting kind of play style, should I say? Because with both the Nissan... Uh, R32 CP and the Mazda 787B because you are pushing them so hard they have a horrible amount of understeer so having a car that can actually corner really well and come out of the corner almost drifting in some cases is really enjoyable as it just feels different from the standard grind of just hitting your breaking point and being like oh I'm going into the wall now all right, so with the stock Mercedes-Benz CLK LM, we did a 26 minute and two second, almost three second total time there. So big yikes. I'll say that there are a couple racing incidents. I want to say there was one on like lap 13 and anyway. So generally speaking with the CLK LM, I managed to do a fuel mode three on pretty much the entirety of the race and then probably about 13 no, well, 12 to 13 i moved it back up to about fuel mode 2 and i was able to get me right over the line with just a little bit of fuel left so if i were a better driver i mean you can tell on average that it looks like a lot of the um race there was about like a 140 ish on the low end it's just because of the racing instance and whatnot it looked like that we we're um, really screwing it up there for our average lap time. But I honestly think if that you're a better driver and a little bit more consistent than I am, uh, much like my personal tune with the Mazda 787B, I think you can ideally hit an average 138. And then again, kind of equal to that total ideal time of a 24 minute 30 second. So I'm going to be honest, I probably should have opened this video with this build here, but the reason why uh, we're discussing builds right now on Sardegna is because an individual by the name of Turbo Dotson had actually put together a post not too long ago, less than a week ago now, about an absolute monstrous build that they made for the Nissan R92CP. 
Now, this car in this build, one of the main points here is that you are just on fuel mode one, simply put. And you're actually on soft tires. Yes, soft tires. But of course, you're definitely adjusting like the uh, power output of it with the ECU and the power restrictor. You're adding ballasts and all the rest of it. So you're really weighing this car down in order to get this performance here. So again, very interestingly, because it is on softs, it's got a crazy amount of grip versus all the other builds where they're all basically using hard tires. And some of them, when they go into pit, they're literally just only to go in for fuel. So this car is going in for very necessary tire changes and of course, fuel. So yeah, this, this car is absolutely mind-boggling crazy because uh, Turbo Dotson had made mention that after probably about a solid month of just testing this car out and trying to get the right build going, they was able to get down, or rather I should say they, they are able to get all the way down to a 22 minute, 38 second total time. And during the first stint while you're on fuel mode one, which then you pit on lap eight. You're averaging low 127s, which again is jaw dropping. Of course, when you come back out on lap eight out of the pits, you can move up to fuel mode one and you do a little bit more conservatively. Again, a little bit more conservatively at 128. So already you can tell that this car is insanely fast just from the standpoint that on the beginning of lap two, we're already passing for, well, first place. So yes, this car is a handful of the drive. It understeers like crazy, as you can tell, as I'm struggling to commentate and keep this damn thing on the road, but it is wicked fast. One of the crazy other points about this build as well is to get the performance that it has it has probably the longest gearing in first gear that i've ever seen so it's really weird because with this car well with all the other cars that we've tried is that when you approach these slow corners here you're wanting to be in gear two as most race cars like the only like zero to 40 so nearly like pit limiter range is first gear i should say miles an hour but this it's zero to 116 miles an hour for just the first gear so all again all these tighter corners here all these slower corners you're going to be in first gear if you're used to the mazda 787b builds it's going to take a lot of time retraining your brain to get used to going all the way down to first gear as every fiber of my being says, no, this is second gear. This is second gear. Why aren't you in second gear? Why are you a gear low? It, it makes for a very interesting drive, especially when you've got the soft tires degrading at such a high rate. All right. Finally, we have an answer. The fastest build that I've raced on tonight is the Turbo Dotson Tune of the Nissan R32CP. With some caveats here. Yes, it is still technically the fastest out of all of them. I mean, if you look at the average lap times, even with all the struggling that I've done tonight, I do want to put a huge asterisk on this because when it comes to this build, I have never had a more difficult driving experience with the soft tires. The, it, since they are constantly, you know, like coming up into temperature, then you have a tiny wind ideal window of operation, and then they immediately start degrading outside of it. I mean, if you can take a look at the lap times that I've got here, they are quite seriously all over the place. I mean, they're all over the place anyway, but I mean, more so with this build. So not only that, going down the main straight in the CLK LM, perfectly fine experience, 
smoother than butter. Both of the 787 builds that I used, like, I had to turn down the force feedback on the wheel because it was jostling so much. But then I got within a relatively decent window of operation there, too. The Nissan R92CP, even with the turn down force feedback, was basically undrivable. I don't know how else to say it, but it was like, like you'll see in the footage there, it was just going nuts. So I might play around with this build a little bit, especially with the camber on the wheels to make it more stable on the straights because it's it, like I said, it was basically undrivable there. But if you get the car under control and you really work at it to get the greatest lap times that you can get. I imagine that eventually you'll be able to get Turbo Dotson's time of about 127.5, about average every lap, and then bringing down your ideal time to about 22 minutes and 38 seconds, which again is mind boggling and just jaw dropping in my mind. So that being said, there are your answers as to what my personal favorite builds are for Sardegna. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, next week, I believe Formula 123 is coming out, so stay tuned for me trying out the online play and trying not to fail miserably, which you know me apparently will. But again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.